I'm Jason D. Board, and this is kind of my who are you, why are you here video. So um, some of you might not know who I am or what the original prop blog is. And some of you probably know who I am and what the original prop blog is. And you're like, what the hell is Jason doing making YouTube videos? So this is kind of my explanation for both, both parties. So hopefully it'll make sense to both or at least one one or one of the two. So um, this is a kind of a spinoff of the original prop blog, which is a website that talks about um, the art market for collecting and selling and authenticating original props and costumes and other production material from film and television. So how did I start the website and why? So I started collecting um, replica props, so I kind of came into this field sideways back in 2002. So going back a little bit further, um, huge Star Wars fan, huge fan of pop culture. I started going to San Diego Comic Con back in 1987 when I was 14 years old. And then I remember... Um, I think in the mid 90s, there was a company called Icons and they had a license to produce licensed replica Star Wars props as well as um, props from other, you know, film properties and television properties. So I remember seeing those at Comic-Con as a kid and thinking, oh, wow. Or I guess I was in college at that point. I was thinking, wow, it'd be so cool to own like a replica of a lightsaber that, you know, isn't a toy from Kenner or something that actually looks real, but I couldn't afford it at the time. So that was kind of that. Um, fast forward to 2002. And at that point I learned about a company called Master Replicas that was just starting to launch their um, line of licensed Star Wars prop replicas. I think I probably found out about it on Rebel Scum at the time because it wasn't something I was like actively seeking out. So the idea was, okay, I'm just going to buy one lightsaber or one blaster and like that would satisfy that, you know, desire to own some cool prop from Star Wars. So it was even cooler than I thought it would be. And then, you know, kind of spun into, okay, let's collect just, just Star Wars replicas. So... Um, as I was doing that, I found the replica prop forum and I actually met online a lot of people who are kind of big players in this art market today, like Stephen Lane and Brandon Allinger, Tom Spina. And then outside of the forum, you know, I'd meet people like Jeff and Desi from Screen Used and James Commissar and... You know, it's meeting all kinds of cool people. It was a much sort of smaller field back then. It was a little bit um, simpler, I guess you could say. So um, my interests shifted because then I learned, oh, wow, you can own an original prop or original costume from a film or television show. So that just totally like blew my mind at the time. So I started looking into that. And then I was a fan of the movie Mystery Men with, you know, Greg Kinnear and Janine Garofalo, William H. Macy and Paul Rubens. It was a really cool, funny movie. It featured superheroes. I was really into superheroes, but it was pretty much a bomb. No one cared about it. There was um, costumes in the marketplace from the movie that were relatively cheap, you know, hundreds of dollars, maybe somewhere at max between one and $2,000. So it wasn't going to like, you know, put you into bankruptcy or something, buying a couple costumes from this movie. So then I'm like, okay, I really like this idea of owning something original. So I ended up selling off all the replicas I bought and thought, okay, I'm just going to focus on original props, but only mystery men. Like I, that was the rule, nothing else. So um, I got a little bit obsessed with it. I even made like a website just about, you know, showcasing the props and costumes from the movie. 
But it was a really good experience because it taught me kind of the fundamentals of how how this crazy world kind of works and some of the risks. But it wasn't risky because no one cared about mystery men. No one was making fake mystery men costumes because it would cost more to make a fake than what they could sell it for if someone thought it was real. So um, it was a really good experience. And eventually I broke my one rule and I started buying, you know, props and costumes from other films and television shows. And um, I kind of built a really impressive collection. That was kind of the accident was I had bought um, something from Hellboy for like, I don't know, $800 or $1,000 or something. And then some guy saw a picture of it online and kept hounding me and hounding me. He wanted to buy it. And kind of as a joke to make him go away, I said, okay, I'll sell it to you for $10,000. And then he actually paid it. So I was like, what the heck is, <laughs> that's insane. So I ended up taking that money and kind of invested it into other stuff. But I was always buying for myself, but then things would kind of get to the point where they'd have, I felt that they had kind of a market value that was above what it was worth for me to keep it. So I kind of quickly got some really nice pieces because things were cheaper back then too. And that was kind of my entry into this world. And then um, for a time, I was somehow I wound up being like the admin for the movie prop discussion forum online. So I met more people and it was, it was a really educational experience. So then in 2007, I bought a prop from someone and it ended up, it was fake. And it was like tens of thousands of dollars. Like for me, it was a ton of money. So, and as soon as I got it, like I knew it wasn't right. Like no one told me it was fake. I figured out it was fake. Like within probably 12 hours of owning it, I figured out there's no way this could be what the guy told me it was. So thankfully, because of another person, I got my money back, but it was a really harrowing experience. And then I thought, well, maybe this happened for a reason. Maybe this was supposed to happen. Maybe that I can learn from this and help other people. So that was kind of the genesis of the original prop blog. That's why I started it. It probably would have happened anyway, but that that's why it happened at the time that it did. So my original idea was kind of like collecting where I was like, okay, I'm, I put limitations on myself. So originally the idea was I'm going to, you know, put up maybe a dozen articles, kind of movie prop collecting 101, um, kind of informative information just to help people that might stumble across it. And then it took on a life of its own, um, the stories I could tell. <laughs> But um, long story short, I've put up thousands, I think, of articles over the years, over over a decade. Um, several years ago, I kind of had a transition where that impulse, that collector impulse, like, oh, I need to own a bunch of stuff. I kind of got over that. I didn't feel like I needed to own the things. I, I felt like that wasn't really my purpose in this field. Um, and so uh, being a fan of pop culture and different genre movies, you know, action and superheroes and sci-fi, fantasy, you know, I recognize that it's important that these things have been saved. And it's really the collectors that have saved all this stuff over the years. It's not as much the studios or museums and things like that. It's, it's collectors. It's people that have a passion about these, you know, shows and movies that kind of, you know, captured their imagination. And that's why this stuff is still around. And that's also why um, the people who kind of see beyond their own collecting interests also have endeavored to really capture the history of different pieces too. And, um, you know, ensure that there's documents that speak to authenticity and and support that so kind of i i've seen my role over the years is trying to support that and support the marketplace and do what i can third party to try to keep things more legitimate because there is a lot of fraud there's a lot of people out there trying to scam people trying to make you know money off of people who 
you know, we always joke, want to believe like in the X-Files, you know, they want to, they buy something and they want to believe it's real. Like several times a week, I get emails just from random people who find my website who say, yeah, I just bought this on eBay. Can you authenticate it for me? And it's like, if the seller didn't, you know, prove to you that it's authentic, then it's going to be really tough in most cases to, to sort of back into that. So that was kind of my idea with the original prop blog and kind of my role stepping back from collecting, being more third party, trying to help people, trying to help the hobby. Um, you know, and it's just about goodwill. It's just about trying to help people. So getting back to YouTube, um, you know, it seems like over the years, YouTube has really come into its own as like uh, homegrown content. You know, there's there's so much good content on, on YouTube. And especially in, in this year, in 2018, I hardly watched cable television. I hardly watched network television. I hardly even watch Netflix as much as I used to anyway. I primarily watch YouTube and it's primarily just ordinary people making really good content that's, you know, entertaining. So um, my idea is to create these videos to supplement what I do on the original pro blog, what I've always done, and to um, use it as a platform to maybe do things I haven't been able to really accomplish easily in written form over the years. Um, so it, there might be some videos that are boring coming up. I apologize for that. Um, hopefully over time, I'll learn how to use this video format more effectively. But the idea is to do things a little more freeform, a little more editorial. Um, in video, it's easier to convey tone, whereas I think in written form, people, depending on their perspective, interpret things differently or misinterpret things. So at least if I'm talking, hopefully things will come across a little more um, as they're intended. So. Like as an example, I always put up the auction calendar to give people a heads up about what events are coming up and things like that. Cause, you know, things fall through the cracks where people don't know about things until after the fact. So also historically with um, the original prop blog, I always put up articles um, pointing out bigger auction events just so people have some awareness about them. And after the fact, sometimes I try to take a look at what happened in the auction, what sold, what didn't, highlights, unusually high prices, unusually low prices. And that can take a lot of time in written form and putting links and stuff. So with YouTube, um, you know, I'm planning to do some of that in video format. It'll be easier, it'll be more comprehensive, and hopefully it will provide a little bit more information than in the past. So that's something that'll be coming up. Um, I have ideas about revisiting old articles that I've written and kind of updating them in video form. There's um, weird conversations I sometimes encounter online um, pertaining to the art market and collectors and things that I'm interested in commenting on, but not necessarily participating in online. But in, again, in written form, sometimes, you know, things are perceived as attacks or perceived differently than I intend. So I think doing things in video format will um, open up some possibilities. And me being in front of the camera talking to the camera is not something I plan to do regularly or hopefully ever again. This might be just a one time thing. But I thought it was important just if people don't know who I am to at least see that I'm a real person and um, get kind of an explanation about where I'm coming from. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, again, it might, there might be kind of a learning curve to make interesting, compelling content, but that is the um, objective. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a background about me, about the original prop blog and about kind of what this YouTube thing is about. I'm still going to do articles on the original prop blog. Um, there'll be YouTube videos on YouTube, and then the YouTube videos will be embedded in the articles on the original prop blog. So it's kind of just added content, and hopefully um, the format will allow me to do things to create more content and more frequent content. So that's the scoop. 
Um, if you made it all the way through this rambling mess, <laughs> thanks for your support. And um, if you have any suggestions or ideas, please email me, jason at originalpropblog.com. And as always, if people need help, it's better to email me first just because I get so many random phone calls throughout the day. And sometimes I'm in a position where I can't really help you help you and people sort of just go right into it. Um, so it helps if you email me first, because also if it's something that um, where there's another resource that I think can help you better and quicker and more directly, I can refer you to that individual or organization. So that's the scoop. Original Prop Blog is at originalpropblog.com. You can email me at jason at originalpropblog.com. And hopefully um, I'll make some good content on YouTube. And um, if not, I apologize, but that is my intention and I'll, I'll see what I can do. So thanks.